Hello chat. Hello. So today, um, I'll switch to the other screen in a minute. So today, <laughs> um, we're going to look at the new Ninjago teaser, which dropped yesterday. Um, I was kind of confused like at first because I originally I thought that the teaser was um, like an April Fool's thing but then I watched it <laughs> and I thoroughly like then I'm just like okay this is gonna be like absolutely crazy and I haven't I need my, I've got my tripod out <laughs> where is it there we go. I need to put my phone in charge as well. Um, but yeah, we're gonna look over the new Ninjago teaser, and then yeah. Um, so I'm gonna switch over to that screen in a minute. I just need to set up the um, Instagram live stream. Hopefully. It doesn't reset my stream again like it did Friday. That Friday stream was like just an entire mess. And then we're gonna finish this. Oh, I need to flip my webcam actually. I have to flip. I can do that in a minute. I can do that in a minute. Uh, let me see. Live and then uh, TV slash coffee Nutella. Okay. okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. Hopefully, it doesn't fall over and reset my stream again. I would like to move it onto this side of my desk, but the thing is, I don't have like an outlet on that side of my head desk. My the outlet is here, so I have to whenever I need to charge my phone, um, I have to do it here. Like when I have to charge my phone for a live or whatever. Okay, so first we need to change this to here. Not that, Not that screen. This screen here, and. Yeah, let's look at the uh, teaser trailer. Let's turn this off. Oh wait, that might be a bit too loud. I think that's a bit too loud. Okay, here we have this like dimensional rift. I've seen a few people say this is Jinjago, and I think it might it might be Jinjago. From what I know of um, this next like season. It's gonna apparently um we're gonna like have um dimensional rifts like open so uh and yeah okay and that's um an x mech I can't tell who that is right there maybe it's pixel maybe it's not and then we have. Here we have, okay, that's J, not near like I originally like thought. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's J. Yeah, that's J. And then we have Kofi, Theo, our favorite badass, our favorite badass. And then here, that's Wolf. So she, get, so she gets her powers back. And then there's Kai here. Cole again. And then here, right here. Right here. Uh, apparently this is the, I can't get it any closer, but apparently this is, this is Lloyd here, obviously. And then apparently this behind him, the guy he's carrying is um armin i think his name is aka one of the new characters from uh 
this season. And then there's Lloyd here. A lot of people in Twitter are saying his eyes are um, black hair. But I don't think they are. They look they look more green to me than black. So I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I haven't tweeted it. I haven't tweeted out that I'm live. Okay. Let's just go over to Twitter and say I'm live. And there we go okay so yeah his eyes look more green here especially like this one here it looks more green than black so i don't know and then we have like a dimensional rift like opening up this i believe is junjago and then this i believe is the departed realm um i'm not sure which this one would be um, i think this is like our normal ninjago realm here i don't know what these three are here but i I don't know which these ones. I only know that I think that was Departed and then I think that's Jinjago there. That might be the first one actually, but I'm not sure. That is cool. Lego Ninjago. I don't think they've actually announced a title for this season yet. I don't think they have announced it. But yeah, that is the newest Ninjago season. That's the newest, um, that is the newest, um, that is the newest, um, teaser for this season. Okay, I've got to flip my camera around and move this to here. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so last stream last week. We read um, Kai and Zane's story. Go watch that stream if you haven't. Let me let me check. Actually, I did. I think I think the body is highlighted. I'm pretty sure, but I want to just check. But yeah, the VOD the VOD should be highlighted. Um, videos. We seen the highlights in the post. Yeah, it is highlighted. It is. It is highlighted. And I think what I've started to do as of recently is um, I think I've mentioned this before, but this season I'm going to um, highlight all my Oz work um, streams. So, yeah. Um, let's see. All my highlights. Okay, so I first started highlighting like seven months ago. And then I did a Monsters and Muscle stream when I, like four months ago, when I started playing the game. And then I have the Cries old stream. And then I have the Christmas stream, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm a sponsor. And then I have the sponsor stream. Yeah, it is, it is highlighted. Basically, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight this stream as well, I'm gonna highlight the stream. Okay, so we need to get onto Cole's story <laughs> to prevent this, um, to prevent the stream from being like longer than it needs to be. So yeah, chapter one, down on the farm. Carrying his suitcase, a dark haired man with a neatly trimmed mustache walks across the rural road to the gate of a small farm. This is talking about, I believe this is talking about Lou. This is pretty, this is talking about Lou. An older woman in overalls and a straw hat was using a hoe to break up style. Excuse me, the man said. I was wondering if you see my son, Cole. Yeah, this is talking about Lou. Bushy eyebrows, great head of hair. He does have a great head of hair, doesn't he? He does have a great head of hair. Yup, the woman drawled. He's over yonder, trying to get Henry to plow the big field. She turned and pointed past the rice paddies that ran across, left hung along the side of the farm to the large, uh, to the large field behind the farmhouse. The man could see could see Cole straining to coax. I'm not sure how to say that word. A fat yak into pulling a metal plow. And then over here you can see this is Lou. 
right here. And then right here is Cole. I don't know if you can see him properly, but that is Cole. Yeah. You guys have a good boy, the woman said. We ain't sure who's more stubborn, Cole or Henry. Cole is a very stubborn character. He, he is, he is. The man smiled. That sounds like Cole. As she walked the man over, she noticed his suitcase was covered in with sp stickers bearing city names. You one of them traveling performance? Yes, he replied, smiling proudly. I'm part of a song, a song and dance group called the Royal Blacksmiths. You may have heard of us. We won the Blade Cup several times. <laughs> nope, never heard of you, she answered. We don't, we don't have time for performance out here. Crops don't take a night off, so we don't either. My name's Sally Bob, by the way. I'm Lou. Pleased to meet you, the man said. As they drew closer, Lou watched Co Cole plant his hands on the yak's rear end and push him as hard as he could his feet slipping in the mud. Henry seemed happy where he was. Lou also saw that Cole had a bandage around had a bandage around his head and bruises on his arms, like he had, he'd been in a fight. But Lou didn't know how that would be possible, since losing his power as the master of Earth in the battle against the Crystal King, Cole hadn't been in any fights that Lou knew of. I mean, Cole has always been in fights. He was in fights when he was like a kid and stuff, so... Cole's feet finally slipped out from under him completely and he plopped face first into the mud. Henry gr Henry grunted, looking good, son, Lou said cheerily. Cole looked up, wiping mud from his eyes and broke up in a huge smile. Dad, he cried, leaping up to hug his father and gave mud all over Lou's suit. How did you find me? Lou squeezed his son back. You wrote Master Wu a letter, remember? Lou said, to tell him where you'd been in case he never needed you. It's been a while since we last saw each other. So I took a break in between tour stops to come and see if you're alright. Losing your powers as the master of earth as the master of earth can't have been easy. Sally Bob turned to amble back to her field. I'll leave you two if you two to your hugging, she said. Crops don't hug and neither do we. You're welcome to stay in our barn with with your boy as long as you like, she told Lou. Thank you, Lou called back, waving. Then he noticed the mud all over his suit. He chuckled and decided to wipe it off. Sorry about that, Cole muttered. It's great to see you, Dad, but I'm fine. After I left the monastery, I was pretty down, wondering what I was going to do with the rest of my life. All of my friends had moved on. Had moved on. I was just wondering. I didn't feel anchored to anything. Then I found this farm, and I thought, must have a farm in the land. It sort of made sense. So I thought I'd give it, to be, give it a try and see what not fighting all the time would be like. But enough about that. Come on, let's get you, let's get you settled. He, let's get you settled. Henry, you take a break. The yak grunted again. Cole took his father, took his father's suitcase and led him past some small harvest and towards a lot towards a large barn. Bank? Barn. And I kinda like it here. The people have treated me great, like one of their own, he said. He waved at a farmer walking in the other direction carrying a sack of a sack of seeds. Hi Bob Bob. Is everyone just named does have is everyone's like first name hyphen hyphenated with Bob? <laughs> Heading out to the plant to plant that Northfield? The man smiled and nodded, continuing on, and when he was past, Cole saw that his father was defeated. That's Bob Bob, he explained to Lou. He's Sally Bob's brother. Okay, I think it's just their family thing then. That's one of the best things about this place. Only some of the farmers are related to each other, but they all treat each other like one big family, and they're super peaceful. I wish, I think they worship the land. Lou gently went to touch one of the bruises on Cole's arm. Looks like peaceful farming can get pretty dangerous, he said. Oh, that Cole replied with a frown. Sally Bob's bunch have been having a tr having a trouble with her neighbor Takanagi. He's a big time farmer who owns all the land around Sally Bob's, and Sally Bob won't stop. Takanagi wants all the land though, so he sends his folks over here every every so often to try to convince her. And you've been defending the land for the farmers, Lou guessed. Trying to at least. I promised Mom I'd always stand up for the others. <laughs> I love Cole so much. <laughs> You can see why he's my favorite character, and that means whether I I have powers or not. He's fine. I thought being here would be a simpler life, one where I didn't need to be a ninja. So far, that hasn't happened, but I think it'll work out somehow eventually. Lou, don't Lou nodded. Then he looked at Cole closely. I know you say you like it here, but but do you feel what was the word you used? Anchored here. Maybe grounded is a better term. Like this place and these people will give you a sense of balance in your life. Why did I tell you? 
show you these ones. Okay, so this is coal right here. And then this is coal and moo right here. Okay. And I'm guessing that's Bob Bob right there. I can't, you can't really see him to be honest. You can't really see him, so. Uh, coal shrugged. I don't know. I feel like something is, something's been missing since I lost my powers. And working here makes it not so bad. At least I don't think about it so, as much. Luke could hear the uncertainty in Cole's voice. He knew not feeling so bad wasn't the same as be being grounded. As they continued into the barn, Lou looked around. Her farm was hardly the place he expected to find Cole. But if this was where his son really felt he should be, then so be it. Okay, well, on chapter two now. Attack of the War Tractors. Lou woke up with a start, sitting up in Sally Bob's barn, hearing a groaning noise like a heavy door opening for the first time in hundreds, hundreds of years. What's that? he cried. Across the barn, Cole woke and wiped sleep from his eyes. Huh? Oh, that's the farmer's rooster. It must be surprised. That doesn't sound like any rooster I've ever heard, Lou replied, hurrying to the barn door and sliding it open. Instead of a rooster, he was startled to see the yak, yak standing before him. It looked from chin to hairline with its sandpapery tongue. Lou yelped, yelped in surprise and jumping back. And then there's Lou and Cole and the yak right here. Henry likes to pretend he's a rooster, Cole explained, patting Henry's nose. Lou looked at the dark sky, but it doesn't look like the sun's coming out. Coming up, he pointed out. It looks like the middle of the night. Cole stepped out of the barn with his dad and gazed at the stars confused. That's weird, he said. The only other time Henry pretends he's a rooster is when there's trouble, but I don't see any. Before he could finish, they heard the rumbling, <laughs> heard the rumbling of engines, and a moment later, five pairs of headlights created a hill in the, in the distance. The lights grew bigger and the rumbling louder as they approached the farm. Takanagi? Lou asked. Yeah, stay here, Dad. Cole implored. You'll be safe. Cole ran towards the headlights. Whatever Takanagi was sending their way, there were more of them and that than there were no war of coal. Lou admired his son's bravery, but he wished he had so someone or something else on his side. The other farmers stood outside their homes, watching, not making any move to go to his aid, and Cole was trying to protect them. Maybe the farmers were peaceful, but they would surely would but surely they could do something to help. Since it appeared they wouldn't, Lou decided he would help. He would. He ran after Cole, quickly becoming winded. I'm in shape for soft shoe dancing, not sprinting, he thought. As he got closer, he saw that the approaching vehicles were tractors, which made sense, but they weren't like normal tractors. They had been heavily modified, with metal platings on along their sides. The drivers, too, wore metal plating on their overalls. They wore helmets and carried long pitchforks, like bizarre armoured knights from some medieval tale. And then... There is Cole and Lou right here, and then the tractor is, tractors are up there. Lou ran up beside his son, who had stopped to make a stand before the war tractors. Dad, I told you to wait in the barn. You're not a fighter, Cole explained. I'll do whatever I can to protect my family, Lou replied firmly. Family is the most important thing. <laughs> I love these two, man. Money, Jeff. <laughs> They're just chromatic. Uh, the drivers stopped their war tractors. The lead driver pointed his pitchfork, pitchfork handle at Cole. Save yourself a lot more pain, kid, and convince Sally Bob to sell to Takanagi. I told you, this is their land, and if they don't want to sell, they don't have to. The lead driver turned to his partners and waved them ahead. Do you have a plan, son? Lou asked worriedly. Worriedly. Since I don't have my powers, I'll just keep doing what I've been doing. <laughs> Using a mass jitsu and hoping for the best. Cole told him. The water actors were already almost upon them. Cole tried to spin, but didn't have enough room and he turns right and threw the broom handles at the two of the, two of the drivers. He fell, adding more bruises to his collection. 
two other drivers grinning circled Cole at high speed, splashing mud all, all over him. The fifth driver sped straight at Lulu. Lulu didn't know what quite to do. He didn't know any fighting move. He only fancy fighting moves. Just stand steps. Suddenly, he realised what he could do. He And he smiled. Just as the war tractors war tractor reached him, Lou gracefully slid to a side. As a machine went past, Lou executed a perfect, perfect stance twirl. His foot connected with the war tractor at a perfect time in the perfect spot. At least that was Lou. That what was <laughs> that was what Lou was hoping for. But instead of knocking the heavy field, heavy vehicle on its side as he had intended, Lou just bounced awkwardly off from the machine and landed very ungracefully in the mud. The driver was speechless, absolutely baffled by what he had witnessed, and couldn't take his eyes off the unfortunate dancer. He was so preoccupied with Lou's blunder, he didn't notice he was driving his vehicle off the path and straight into a ditch until it was too late. The war tractor suddenly fell, o- fell over on its side, sending an itch driver into the mud too. Cole, however, was having a lot more trouble. Three of the other drivers wouldn't allow him a moment so he could use his spinjitsu. He concentrated on deflecting their blows instead, but the fourth driver swooped his pitchfork handle behind Cole's knees and he fell once more. The three drivers broke away, rampaging their war tractors up and down the fields, ruining the farmer's crops. The farmer still just watched. Cole again tried to stand, but the leader pinned him to the ground with his pitchfork handle. And then right here, we have the leader and Cole. Uh, right here. This was your last chance, kid. Next time, we'll get mean. The goons all turned and drove back the way they come, having done enough damage for now. Lou looked at his, da- at his, at his day's son with concern. Cole, are you alright? No broken bones, Cole replied, rising unsteadily with Lou's help. He watched the fogs go, his eyes distant. Lou worried for him. What is it, Cole? He said. Cole didn't look, Cole didn't look back at him. It's just, I don't know how I'm gonna, gonna do it this time, he told he told his father, I don't know how I can keep my promise to mum. To mom. I am so not normal about this family. <laughs> Chapter 3, The Living Room Dance. Lou stayed up all night with Cole, Cole outside the barn, listening to his song trying to come up with a plan for defending Taganagi and his folks, then throwing away his ideas almost as soon as he thought of them. When morning arrived, arrived, Cole was no closer to a solution. The more I fight back against him for the farmers, the more violent he's going to get. But And with the farmers not being fighters, they could, they could re- get really hurt, he said. But if I leave, they'll lose their land and I'll be breaking my promise to mom. Suddenly, Lou had a thought. What if we put on a show to distract Takanagi and his henchmen? Okay, Cole said slowly, asking a question he already knew the answer to. What happens when the show's over? Lou thought about it and then slumped. The farmers will be right back where they started. I feel powerless, Cole said through clenched teeth, frustrated. I mean, I know I don't have any powers, but I hate feeling powerless. He looked. He looked down. I bet no, Mom never felt this way. You'd be wrong, Lou told him. Cole looked up, surprised. It wasn't long after your mother and I had met she unlocked her true potential. She had some amazing, amazing adventures. We were young and in love, and soon we decided to have the biggest adventure together, becoming parents. Lily was so excited, knowing she'd passed down her powers onto her child, you. Cole smiled. He'd never heard this story about his mother before. Other farmers, including Sally Bob, started wandering over to listen too. After you were born, Lou went on, your, your mum kept going on, out on missions. She loved helping others, but those missions became bigger, and she, she'd she be away for more and more time. I felt guilty because I wasn't helping her. I questioned why she had why she had me in her life at all. How could she need a powerless man like me? So what did you do? Sally Bob asked, fairly engrossed in the story. Well I knew Cole needed me, Lou said, then turned back to his son. I took some time off from the Royal Blacksmith so I could always be around. Even when your mum couldn't. And you and I had a wonderful time, playing together, singing together, dancing together in the living room. One day your mother came home from a long adventure. She had just saved all of Ninjago, and she was crying. Why? Cole asked, leaning forward. 
because she'd grown so much and she felt like she had been a part of any of it. She had spent time with you, but it's not, not as much as she wanted. She said she was feeling very out of balance. It was starting to affect her during missions. She was thinking about us when she was out fighting and when she was with us. She was thinking about how to be a better hero. She didn't feel grounded in either place. And then right here, you can see silhouettes of them. There's Lou, Lily, and then there's baby Cole, who is so adorable. Just absolutely so cute. She felt powerless, Cole said quietly. Exactly, Lou said. But you and I looked at, looked at each other and it was amazing. We took her hand and started dancing with her right there in the living room. And we laughed and we cried happy tears because we were together. Your mum knew we were okay, that we were always thinking of her and loving her. And that she could draw strength from her family. From family. And I finally knew that I was helping her. I knew she needed me because I, we, kept her grounded. Family was the foundation for everything. She carried that with, with her for the rest of her days. I'm so not normal about this family. Why are they just so cute? Lou smiled at his son. We all feel powerless sometimes. So it's good to know we can draw strength from our family so if we need to. Wow, thanks for telling me that, Dad. I wish she was here right now. It's also not you're here, but I could really use all the strength I could get against Takanagi. As much as since Sally Bob and her friends aren't fighters. Says who? Sally Bob says in Dignantly, I think that says. And then, right, there it is. Sally Bob is Lou. And then there's this coal over here. I'm not used to seeing myself like this, so. Huh? Cole said, surprised and confused. I just assumed because you never try to help me when Takanagi's folks come. Sally Bob scowled at him. You never asked. You just came in here and you told us to stay back. That you'd handled it. Yeah, that you'd handled it. Handle it. Handle it. <laughs> so we did it. So we did. Cole squeezed his eyes shut, embarrassed. You're kidding, he explained. Cops don't kid. So we don't either. Sally Bob informed him. But we will learn how to fight to defend our land. If you show us how. Optimism and excitement surged with Cole. Let's get started, he shouted. Not just yet, Sally Bob said, leaning down and squinting at him. One more thing you need to know, fella. The minute you planted your first seed here, you became part of our family too. Cole smiled gratefully. So did his, so did his father. Yes, ma'am. Cole replied. Chapter 4, The Battle of Sally Bob's Farm. We're almost done with this. There's like, I think there's five, there's five chapters. There's five chapters per story, I'm pretty sure. So we're like... got not too yeah we've not got long left to do to the Jay story the rest of that day and the early part of the evening was spent tra on training Cole gave the fathers a crash course in farm defense using whatever was at hand for makeshift weapons he held tryouts to see who could throw a corn cob the farthest and the hardest Sally Bob had a surprisingly good arm. He instructed the farmers how to use hoes as combat staves in case the struggle became hand-to-hand. -hand. That went fine, although the farmers with shorter attention spans kept wandering off to uh, dig furrows that could be used later for planting. Cole cleverly redirected their efforts so that they were digging deep trenches in which to hide all trapped Takanagis. Well, trapped. I feel like I keep saying Takanagi different ways each time. I have three Discord games. <laughs> One of them is Mr. Crafting and stuff. Okay, I'm just checking these and then up here. Okay, there we go, there we go. Together they all pitched in to tear down the barn. 
repurposing its wooden planks and tools to construct primitive ca- primitive catapults that were nonetheless capable of launching hay bales several hundred feet. Lou participated in the training as well, hoping he can, hoping maybe he could learn a little something that, if not useful for fighting, might come in handy as perhaps a dance move. When training was over, Cole knew it wouldn't be enough to stop Takanagi and his men. The farmer simply that it didn't have enough firepower power to hold out against the invaders, but he hopes desperately that if Salibab and the others could stand strong enough and maybe get a few get in a few licks on Takanagi, he, like most bullies, might decide they were too much trouble and leave, leave them alone. Are you ready? Cole asked quietly after all the preparation had been uh, had been <laughs> had been made. He and Cole crouched behind Sally Bob's house in the last light of the day. The other, the other farmers hid behind their own homes, while crouched in the nearly dug trenches. Sally Bob was with her neighbour behind his house. I think so, Cole, Cole, Cole answered finally, but can I tell you something strange? You can tell me anything, Lou replied. I feel like more like the way I was, more like myself, than I have since I lost my powers. You know how you're talking about being grounded? I think that's kind of how I feel. Maybe not by the specific place, but I did, by these people. Does that make sense? Absolutely, to Lou told him. Cole sighed. I just hope all this works today it wasn't. All this work today wasn't for nothing. I mean, we don't even know if Takanagi is coming tonight. Lou looked behind the property, Fab's property line and panted. I don't think you have to worry about that, he said. The headlights were back at the top of, back at the top of the hill, and Cole could make out the war tractors' silhouettes. One man stepped in between two of the war tractors. His armor was different from the others. He spoke into a into a megaphone. This is Takanagi. I did not appreciate having to be here, but I wanted you to see the face of the man who will seize your land. With my control of, the, of this whole region, everyone will come to me for their vegetables and I will make them pay whatever I want. Do not resist my part- forces. I have another weapon beside these. I do not wish to use it. It is even more horrible and destructive. He paused, running through a me- mental checklist. Okay, I think that is everything. Here we come. And then there is Takanagi himself. The war tractors began moving down the hill. Just the way you thought they'd do, they do this, Lee said to Cole, who nodded. Takanagi's forces approached a seemingly flat patch of land leading to Sally Bob's farm. But when they tried to cross it, the planks dusted with cut grass, disguising the whole empty trench beneath them, beneath gave way. With a loud whoop, the war tractors found nose first, throwing their drivers forward to land on the trenches bottom. There was a cheer from behind the other houses as the farmers realised that their defence strategy worked. But the drivers clumsily spared the trench in their heavy armour, leaving behind their war tractors and lumbering forward on foot. Cole waved his hands to signal the farmers, stepped out of hiding and began hurling their projectiles. Calm cops, heading head Heads of the bok choy and potatoes they had grown. Many missed their mark, but thanks to their armour, the thugs were too heavy to judge the others, most of which were thrown by Sally Bob. None did any real damage, but several of their goons overbalanced and fell on impact. They would get up only to be knocked down again. Cole could see Cole could see <laughs> Cole could see them looking at each other with confusion and even fear. What else could the farmers have have back there to use against them? After their fifth failed attempt to advance, the exhausted goons chose to return and run back the way they'd come. But before the farmers could celebrate, there was another louder roar from the top of the hill. Everyone turned and to their horror they saw an even larger armoured vehicle, this time a massive harvester rumbling towards them. Suddenly it felched a plume of flame. I don't think corn cobs are going to do too much against that, Sally Bob said worriedly. worriedly. As much as the war harvester growl, growled across the fields, coming straight for where the group was standing. That's why we have catapults, Cole replied grimly. Get ready to launch. The farmers ran to their positions by the catapults, which were already loaded with hay bales and let fly. The projectiles are... Art? Arced. <laughs> Arced towards, towards the war thresher. But either smashed harmlessly against its sides or they were incinerated by the jets of flames. 
The wharf fresher continued its slow advance as Cole, Lou, and the farmers watched. Cole could feel the eyes of the farmers and his father waiting on him, <laughs> waiting for his orders. There was only one left. He, he there was only there was only one left. He could think to give that might do any good. He turned to them. I don't want any of you to get hurt. I'll hold Takanagi off as long as I can to get you. I can get while you get to safety. Run. Not giving them to, a chance to protest, Cole turned around and started marching towards the oncoming war fresher. He had no idea what he was going to do, but then out of the corner of, the, of his eye, he could see Sally Bob, the farmers, and even Lou walking with him. What are you doing? He asked in a panic. I told you to run. Crops don't run, and neither do we. Sally Bob growled in response. We stand up for our land like the family we are. They kept... This is a long chapter. This is a decently long chapter. They kept marching. Whatever, whatever they would do, they do it together. The final terrible resolution seemed inevitable. Until the last member of the farm, farm family took matters into his own hoof. Henry the Yak lumbered in front of the farmers in, and into the path of the harvester. Then simply stood there. The harvester paused, as if unsure what to do. We need a distraction to get Takanagi away from Henry before the fre that fresher turns him into state, Lou said. He grabbed up three leftover potatoes then ran into across the field. Dad, don't! Cole yelled, running after him. But Lou ran to a spot about 50 feet to Henry's left and started dancing to the fanciest of you we know while juggling the potatoes. He spun, he twirled, he lurked. And the war har harvester, Takanagi, sat mesmerised by the impromptu performance. Who was this fool defending a stubborn yak? And he remembered why he was there. Angry at himself, he pushed a button to restart the flamethrower and turned it towards the royal blacksmith. Guess there'll be no curtain call, Lou thought, bracing himself. And then here we have the mega fresher, whatever it's called. We have Cole and uh, Lou there. Just before the flamethrower could turn him into ash, however, Cole tackles his father, pushing him out of the way. The flame jet roared over his over the heads. That's a crazy move, Dad, he said, impressed by his father's bravery. We love Lou in this household. A good performer knows how to improvise, Lou gasped out of breath. They heard the war fresher rumble past them and past Henry, again trudling toward the farm. And the farmers who stood fearlessly as the last line of defense. Move, Cole yelled desperately, moving his arms in hope in hopes to gain the farmer's attention. Get away from there, people. Come on, you're going to get hurt. But the fa if the farmers heard him, they showed no signs. They did not turn and run. Instead, they planted their feet firmly and then something, something unexpectedly. They joined hands. When Cole saw this, he was amazed and then he felt strange surge within, within him. Adrenaline. But there was also something more, something powerful and oddly familiar. When Cole saw, when Cole saw the farmers standing together and supporting uh, supporting each other, he mustered the emotional strength he had lost during the fight with, a, with the Crystal King. Energy shot through his limbs and his heart uh, thrummed in his chest. Pointing his hands towards the war harvester and smiling, he wondered if he would regain anything else he had lost. He was pretty sure he knew the answer. Just as power coursed in his veins like lava ready to explode from a volcano, a column of rock erupted beneath the war harvester flipping it into the air and sending it oh, flying away from the farmers. His confidence soared and Cole gestured just as ju just as the Waha was landed. Before attacking Nagi could take any action, another earthen pillar sent the vehicle flying backwards once more and then again and again until it disappeared across over the hill. The farmer celebrated the farmer celebrated, jumping up and down, whooping and hollering. Lou hugged his son. Your powers, they're back. You've restored your balance and unlocked your true potential again. How did you do it? And then we have Cole here. I think that's Sally Bob. Right there. And then there's Lou right here. You did it, Dad. By... <laughs> hello, hello, funky soda pop. Did somebody say Ninjago? Ninjago, yeah! <laughs> uh, reading Quest for Lost Powers. We're actually we're on chapter four of Cole's story right now. He has just gotten his powers back. Um, I read the I read um Kai and Zane's story last week. If you want to rewatch that stream, 
But yeah, welcome on in, welcome on in, Funky Soda Pop. Welcome on in. You did it, Dad, by telling me that story about Mom and how it gave her strength when we held, held us. I love when Jack, I've had a hyper, hyper fixation on it since like forever. I have been watching it since like forever. I've been watching it for like the past eight years. It's been like so long. I I absolutely love this show, honestly. Uh, but tell me that story about how about mum and how we gave her strength when we held hands and danced in the living room. Seeing seeing the farmers hold hands, supporting each other, and grounding each other. I think it grounded me again. Lou nodded because you care because you care about these people. Just like you've become part of their family, they become part of yours. And family is strength. He's put he put his hand on his son's shoulders, filled with emotion. You're amazing today, but with or without your powers, you've always you've always made your mother and me very proud. Cole and Lou grinned as the far, as the, uh, as the farmers rushed to them, slapping Cole on the back. I have to say, your powers came back with a real sen sense of timing. Lou said with a wink. You must get it from your dad. <laughs> okay, we're on the last chapter of Cole's story, and then. After this, we've got Jay's story. Chapter 5. One Last Obstacle Cole and Lou stayed at the farm a while longer and helped rebuild the farm and plant new crops. During that time, Takanagi never returned, nor was he seen at all. After a few days, they heard good news. Takanagi had, in fact, sold all his land because he decided it was too much trouble and was headed far away to pursue a different empire in something easier, like pillowcases. <laughs> Cole's prediction about a bully's behaviour had proven true. Much relieved, the farmers dreamed of having a bumper crop in the next harvest season. And using the profits to buy all the land Takanagi once had, so they could start their own vegetable empire. When the barn was done, Sally Bob saw Cole and Lou approaching, carrying their bags. You'll be leaving now, I expect. The royal blacksmiths have some big shows coming up, Lou told them with a smile. But when we come back this way, I'll make sure... There are tickets for you. Well, crops don't go to shows, and neither do we. Sally Bob smiled at Lou. But in your case, I reckon we can make an exception. Uh, she turned to Cole. You're going on the road with your dad. You're going on the road with your dad? Lou looked at Cole. He wondered the same thing. I'm going back to the monastery of Spinjitzu, Cole said. If I rediscovered my true potential and my powers are back, that might have happened plenty of ninja too. If so, maybe it's time to become a team again. But I'll never forget my time here, Sally Bob, and how you've helped helped me feel balanced and grounded again. If Takanagi or anyone else ever threatens you, send a word to the monastery and I'll come help. I reckon we won't need you for that, Sally Bob said. Now you that you've taught us how to stick up for ourselves. But if you're free around harvest time, Cole left. <laughs> I'll be here. They all shook hands and Cole and Cole and Lou walked towards the gate. I'm glad we got to spend some time together, son, Lou said. Cole put an arm around his dad's shoulders. Me too, dad. You know, you're as much as a hero as mum was. Oh no, I'm just a stronger dance man who can juggle a little, <laughs> Lou said modestly. I'm serious. By keeping mum grounded, you brought her balance and strength so she could be the hero she needs to be. In part because of you, she was able to help a lot of people she wouldn't have been able to otherwise. That means you helped them too. I guess I never thought about it like that. Lou said embarrassed. Thank you, Cole. But it is okay if, but is it okay if I leave the fighting parts of being a hero to people like you? There was a few more steps laughing. Then Cole noticed something ahead. Looks like we've both got to say some say goodbye to somebody. Henry the Yak stood between them and the gate, chewing some grass. He was acting as if he wasn't looking at them, but Cole had a feeling the yak was intentionally blocking them. Cole walked up Cole walked up and Patted Henry on the flank. Henry, old buddy, I'm gonna miss you. Cole told the animal. I'll see you soon for harvest. Henry moved the two steps, a few steps to the side, allowing him to access the to access to the gate. Now he was looking in Lou straight in the eye. I think it was you to say goodbye to you, Dad. He said, "Go really well, okay." He walked up to Henry, snout and show up to say, "Well, Henry, I guess." But before he could get another word out, Henry licked his face again with his slobbery tongue, covering him in yak jaw. Cole laughed as Lou wiped his face with his sleeve. Cole, Lou was laughing too. You're a funny yak, Henry, said Lou. You ever think about going on the road and performing? 
Lou and Co walked out the, out the gate and down the road together. Henry grunted and moved on to another patch of grass and went on with his day. And then over here we have, you can't really see it. So we have uh, Lou and Co right here. Then we have the yacht here and then there's like some of the villages there. Okay, that's cool story over. And now we're on to Jay's story. Like I said, um, last stream, I haven't heard too much about this story other than it's, it includes Nia and Unagami and obviously Jay, but it's like, it's Jay's story. What you're going to expect. Chapter one, the getaway. Welcome to paradise, Nia said gleefully, setting down her bag. The plush hotel room's furniture was overstuffed, the carpeting, uh, carpeting thick. The towel soft. I was sure, and she was sure that Jay's room next door was just as nice. I love this new resort already, and hardly anyone's ever heard about this island. No video games, no television, and all you can eat. Oh, now you can eat buffet at every meal. Just peace and quiet. Getting no response, she turns to see Jay staring out of the glass door to the balcony. Past that, there was nothing but lush jungle. He hadn't even dropped his backpack. Jay, she said. He still didn't turn around. Jay. He jumped, started and smiled weakly. Sorry, Nia, he said, as somewhere else. But hurry up and get here, Nia replied. She sat in the bed and bounced on it a little to see how comfortable it was. Jay went over and sit over stiffly and sat. Come on, Jay. We thought this would be an amazing vacation for us after a fight with the Crystal King. Aside from other guests, we were literally as far as far as we could possibly get from everything. I know, Jay said, sounding a little guilty. And it really is it really is beautiful. So it should be perfect for us to relax, rest up and adjust, right? Nia asked gently. You're right. I'm sorry, Nia, he said again. I just feel like like I'm missing a piece of myself. Nia stood up, nodding with understanding. Yeah, you've seen the powers you had as, as Master of Lightning. Jay stood to you and walked back to the balcony. The balcony does. The way I'm feeling is like when I think about my birth mom giving me up to the walkers for adoption. I love Ed and Ed. Uh, they're my parents. They are my parents. But I'm always going to have this hole inside me where my real mother should be. <laughs> oh my god. I love this already. Hey, getting used to the, cha the changes in your life will take a while. And that's okay, you said. I just want you to get back to me and you, you know? You haven't cracked a single bad joke since we left the monastery. He turned around, an exaggerated look of hurt on his face. Wait, my jokes are bad. <laughs> they are, Jay. They are. They are pretty bad. Nia, sm Nia smiled and gave him a playful punch on the arm. That's more likely. My kids like it. Why don't you take a walk around? Explore. Try not to think about your birth mom or your powers or anything. When you come back, we'll hit that buffet. And then, right here, we have... Jay and Nia Ritter. Jay looks dubious. Walk around. He gestured to the dense foliage and outside their room. Outside? Me. Jay is me. You don't have to walk into the jungle city, boy. <laughs> I didn't even know Nijako had a book until we go. It has several books. There's four. There's like four other books that I know about. No, there's like there's a ton of books for Ninjago. Um, there's four books called Spinjitzu Brothers. Yeah, there's four books um called which is like the Spinjitzu Brothers, which is about Wu and Garmadon's adventures. There's like the Book of Elemental Pas Powers. There's this one. There, <laughs> wait, let, let me look up. Let me look up Ninjago books. Like the official Ninjago books. Um, there's the Book of Spinjitsu. There's, I know there's the Book of Elemental Powers as well. Um, And then there's like comics in like the Ninjago magazines as well. There's the Garmadon comic series. 
there's a Dark Island trilogy. There's a t there's just a ton of like books and comic stuff. There's the Way of the Departed. There's a Splinter in the Blind Blind Man's Eye. Although I don't think the Splinter in the Blind Man's Eye and Way of the Departed have physical copies. I think they're more. I think those two are online. But I, I'm not. I'm not. And I'm not sure about that. The Dark Island trilogy either. But I know the Spinjitzu Brothers. I know Quest for Lost Powers and the Garmadon comic series have physical copies. I've been in the fandom for like eight years. I only learned about this. Oh, to be fair, the books are more of a recent thing. They've only really come back in the last like three, four years or so, and no one really talks about them. Like. I've seen a ton of, I saw a ton of people talking about Quest for Lost Powers when it came out, but no one really talks about the... And I saw a lot of people talking about the comic, Garbodon comics, when they came out, mainly on Twitter. I, I see people mostly talking about Quest for Lost Powers, Garbodon comics, and Dark Island trilogy. No one really talks about the Spinjitzu Brothers books. I think people talked about the first one when it came out, but... I don't think a lot of people still... I don't think a lot of people talked about them. Like, like for example, when Spinjitzu... I didn't even know there was a third Spinjitzu for this book until, like, three or four months after it came out. So, don't worry. I know there's a lot of people that know about, like, all the books, though. Or, like, any of them, for that matter. It's like there's like a ton of books. A lot of them are like either like comics from a lot of them though are like comics from like the um magazines though. Oh and there's um the Lego Ninjago annual. The Lego Ninjago movie annual. That came out in that came out like a year after the, or like the same year as the movie came out back in twenty eighteen. There's a lot of just random stuff for, a random like books and like comics, and stuff. A lot of them, though, a lot, quite a few of them, are not canon though. Like for example, who is the Phantom Ninja? I know for definite that that one. I'm pretty sure that one is not canon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Who is the Phantom Ninja is not canon. These are gonna be coming out for years. What? I know a lot. I know a lot more of the canon ones though have come out in more recent years. So the Garmadon, the Garmadon comics, Quest for Lost Powers, and Spinjitzu Brothers, and the Book of Elemental Powers have come up come out in like the past few years. So I don't, I don't know if that confused you or not, but yeah, there's quite a few. There's there's quite a few. There's quite a few. If you want, you can just look search up Ninjago books, and then there's just a whole um, wiki just listing them all. If you want to get any, and I got I got mine off Amazon. I'm buying one right now. Um, I would recommend I would recommend starting off with Quest for Lost Powers, just in case you want to have a little more context in between. I would even get first ones. I would recommend getting. Uh, Quest for Lost, either Quest for Lost Powers or the Garmadon comics, because the Garmadon comics detail what happened to Garmadon between season ten and Crystallized, and Quest for Lost Powers detail what happened between Crystallized and um the twenty twenty three Ninjago season, and how like the ninja got the powers back. Okay, anyways, let's get back to this. Let's go back to reading this. Um, where were we up to? The beach is on the opposite side of the resort. Stay on the ho stay on the hotel grounds and you'll be fine. Neo reassured him, as he walked walked towards the door. She added, "But come back, all right. Don't run off to some lighthouse, paint really bad paintings, and become a hermit again." <laughs> Don't worry, been there, done that, Jay answered, smiling. And his face took on that comically hurt expression. Wait, my parent, my paintings were bad? Neil laughed, relieving that Jay's sense of humour at least seemed to be coming back, however slowly. Get lost, she told him with mock sternness. Jay smiled and walked out. Chapter 2. Lost and Found 
I'm hopelessly lost. Yes, Jay said five minutes late and standing in the jungle. You lit Jay literally just disregarded his girlfriend's advice to not walk off the, into the jungle. He'd been walking the path around the resort swimming pool, but kids frolicked and a man played steel drums. The next thing Jay knew, the pool was nowhere to be seen and the jungle had surrounded him. It was Jay's own fault. The walk hadn't cleared his mind at all. Jay's too sl silly. He is very silly. Just such a silly guy. He couldn't stop feeling, thinking about how similar it felt to not have his powers and to not know the reasons his mother, from who he inherited those powers, gave him up. I guess they're both about lost, he thought. I'm, I'll never get either one back. That's kind of sad, isn't it? That's pretty sad. Jay paused and strained his ears, trying to hear some sound that could lead him back to the hotel. But there was nothing. No children splashing in the pool. No tropical music from the steel drums. Steel drum player. There was no way he could contact Nia or the hotel. Jay turned in a circle. All these plants look alike, he moaned. Then he gulped. I wonder if ven venomous f frogs are hiding under them. Just wait them to be pounced on me and make me part of their all they can eat buffet. How embarrassing embarrassing would it would that be? Surviving the Crystal King only to be taken out by a toad of a rumbling tummy. He took a pretty deep breath. It's okay, Jay, he told himself. Your imagination is just running away with you. You can't be that far from your hotel and you haven't been walking that long. It only seems like forever. You'll just look up and see where the sun is and you'll know what time it is and what direction you're heading in. Jay looked up through the canopy of leaves overhead, but the leaves were all he could see. He groaned and, he, and then realised something. You know you're on an island. If you walk in a straight line sooner or later, you'll come to a coastline and you just follow it around the island until you reach the hotel. I wonder if there's any any venomous frogs. That's oddly specific. Very specific, Jay. Very specific. And you won't <laughs> and you won't think about any hungry ninja eating frogs. Jay nodded confidently to himself and started walking. Nothing bad was going to happen. And then there is Jay just all lost in the jungle there. Just being a silly little guy. Just being a silly little guy. This is bad, Jay said five minutes later, finding himself trapped in a thicket of farm bushes. And the four minutes before that hadn't been great either. Jay had st stepped on a pile of fallen leaves and found they covered a deep hole with the with slick Oh my god, my tripod just fell over. I'm sorry to whoever is watching this on Instagram. <laughs> Jay is fine for like an hour and then it just and then it just falls over. <laughs> okay, where was I at? Where are they at? Uh covered a deep hole with slick muddy sides that proved tricky to crawl out of. He'd walked to a cloud of gnats who he stung him approximately four million times and he surprised two wild boars, boars with sharp tusks who had then chased him into the farm bushes. Okay, he mused. At least the boars are gone. Now the key is to stay calm. Jay stayed calm for about three seconds, then fresh like mad only to become more and more entangled. Finally, he stopped breathing hard. Finally, he stopped breathing hard. I think I'll take a nice walk. He sneered, exaggerating his own voice. Maybe it'll help me clear my head. That's the last time I listened to myself. But then he heard something approach him. At those footsteps, he wondered aloud, then frowned. I hope they're not ball hoof steps. Then he heard the sound again. Definitely footsteps. Help, he cried out. Over here. Jay heard the footsteps speed up, coming closer. That's it, this way, Jay urged. A moment later, he heard something cracking and hacking through thick vines. And thanks to his imagination running wild once more, he suddenly worried that he stumbled into the territory of a fiendish fugitive who had been hiding on this remote island with nothing but a large machete for company. But finally, the last branches between Jay and his rescuer were, were removed, and Jay found himself standing in the face of a not of not a bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty criminal, but Unagami. The formerly threatening artificial intelligence from the Prime Empire video game, now in the form of a young boy, folded up the walking stick he had been using to clear brush and put it in his kid's backpack. 
which was decorated with starfighters and big headed aliens. Hi, Jay. Nagami said, please let Jay, Jay cheerfully. And here is Jay and Unagami, who's just a little dude, a little scrumpy dude. Hi, Jay, Unagami said, waving at Jay cheerfully. Wow, how crazy is that we're both here on the same island in the same jungle, face to face. I promise to try to figure out, <laughs> figure that out after you help me get out of these farms, Jay grunted. As Unagami removed a stag bandages from Jay's sleeve, Jay looked at the boy with confusion. What are you doing here anyway? Well, Unagami began, since the last time you saw me, when you looked totally different and with eventual rule of prime empire, trying to destroy me and my friends, Jay reminded him. That's true, Unagami agreed sheepishly, sheepishly, but I've gone along a lot since then. Jay raised an eyebrow. Either Unagami ignored him or didn't notice. Anyway, I've been spending a lot of time with my father, the man who created me, Milton Dyer. We began to know each other and become a family. I never felt so happy, so complete. Good for you, Jay growled, remembering his own situation. You've also been developing a new game that happens in a hidden journey, a hidden city in this jungle on a remote island, said Unagami, smiling proudly. I'm here doing research. There are rumors of a city that like here on this island. If you want to help me look for it. I guess it's better than getting lost again, trying to find my way back to the hotel. Jay grumbled. What did you say? Unagami asked. Nothing, Jay answered quickly. He knew Nia would start would be starting to wonder where he was, but finding a lot of city sounded like fun. Certainly more than thinking about his in inner emptiness. Oh no. Oh no. I'd love to help you look, he told Unagami. Thanks. Awesome, Unagami explained, exclaimed. Before we get going, I want to call my dad and tell him I ran into you. He'll be so surprised. Jay watched as Unagami took a tablet device from his backpack and turned it on. An icon of the boy's face appeared. Blinking as it, as it beat up. I call this the Unagami meeting pad. It makes calls from anywhere to anywhere else, and it's powered by a tab planet's magnetic field. I invented it yesterday. Pretty awesome, right? G J replies sarcastically. Getting to know your dad, creating a new game, revolutionizing communications. What are you doing in your spare, all your spare time, Unagami? Figuring out where the chicken crossed the road? No, Unagami replied, darling. Darling, but I started to, but then I realized it wasn't any of my business. <laughs> Best chicken cross the road uh, joke. Now, uh, let's see. Jay thought about that. Then <laughs> had to nod. It was a good answer. A moment later, the holographic face of Milton Dye appeared. Hi, Dad. It's so good to see you. You never get, never get to who I'm with today. So much for not thinking about my inner emptiness, Jay thought gloomily. Chapter 3. Very treasure. Good answer for real. For real. After walking for two hours, following a blurry swan map that a whistling Unagami had produced from his backpack, he and Jay were in, back in the exact same spot where Unagami had rescued the farmer from a master of lightning. At least that's what I th why I looked at Jay, who had who had had enough and stopped stopping in his tracks. In his tracks. Okay, I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm itchy, and I'm sweaty. He told Unigami. And you've been listening to the same song over and over. I know, Unigami replied happily. Isn't it awesome? A coconut fell on a tree somewhere above, flooding heavily at Jay's feet, feet, narrowly missing his head. Jay retrieved the coconut and held held it up for Unigami to see. And I've almost been beamed by sixteen coconuts. <laughs> he was also tired of relieving hint in his mind how he'd lost his powers or how he'd been how he'd learned that his birth mother had given up for adoption so jay didn't mention any of that oh and unigami had made three more phone calls to most dire just to say hello <laughs> i get any closer to this lost city of yours jay asked crankily my feet feel like we've already walked a million miles the coconut might help with your hunger issues and we've actually traveled a mile and a half from where we started unigami informed him looking at his digital watch and a journey can be as fun as a discovery. Oh, you're just a kid, Jim said. What do you know? I'm a kid with an IQ in the tens of thousands, Unagami pointed out. Can you have an IQ that high? Is that possible? But then again, Unagami is an AI, so. And he has that off. Genuine curiosity. Do you know what yours is? Jake, who did know his IQ, which was tens of thousands, tens of thousands lower than Unagami's, changed the subject quickly. I bet Unigami's, 
IQ is much more similar to Pixel and Zane's and Jay's. Let's keep going, he said, and see if this journey gets any more fun. Inokami startled Jay by leaping towards him and bouncing his chest against Jay's. Yes, that's the spirit. And wow, I'm sure I'm having an awesome time hanging out with you. Yeah, awesome, Jay said in response. But he couldn't help but smile as he sat as they started walking again. Inokami was a pesky and annoying know it all, but Jay found himself starting to like the kid nonetheless. It was hard to think of him as a terrible enemy here he'd been not long before. Then Unagami had been a terribly unhappy, unhappy, terribly unhappy, and uh, was taking that out in happiness out of everyone and everything around him. But now he seemed positive and optimistic. Something inside him really had changed, and apparently for the good. Unagami turned the map in his hand and peered, peered at it. According to our map, the last landmark we need to see before finding the lost city is an unusual rock formation. He showed Jay the map, and the sketch of on it was <laughs> on it of a stone shaped like a lightning bolt. A sharp diagonal, interrupted by a horizontal middle. He it appeared covered with greenery. Jay had never seen anything like it before. Well, something like that shouldn't be too hard to spot. He said, looking up, trying to see a break, see, see a break in the trees above. They've got to, they, they've got to be some big mountain on the island, huge borders, right? Or we can get a better view. Keeping his eye trained on the jungle canopy, Jay started to walk back into the under overgrowth. Be careful, Unagami urged, hurrying to, hurrying to keep up with him. The jungle can be dangerous. Oh, what do you know? You're just a kid, Jay repeated, then tripped over a vine and fell on his face. Jay, are you all? All right, I'm fine, he muttered. Just wondering why lost cities always seem to be in jungles and nine places I'm familiar with, like city parks. Unagami tapped his chin, thinking, I guess it would be because a lost city would be more would likely be discovered if it would be if it were in a developed area like a lightning bolt, Jay exclaimed suddenly. No, lightning bolts are developed, Jay, Unagami said patiently. I think that's a pretty obvious. Lightning bolt, look. Unagami looked down and saw Jay staring at, a, a, staring at a rock the size of his shoe. There was a diagonal rock down to the dirt at its narrowest, narrowest point, but a horizontal plane interrupted it halfway down, just like at the, just like in the sketch on Unagami's map. And here we have Jay and Unagami at the back. I love how, okay, you can't really see it, but Unagami has like, a Pac-Man on his Okay, you can't really see it. But it's a Pac-Man on his shirt and I think that I think that's just cute. I think that's just so cute. Yes, you found it, Jay. And got me enthused, slapping him on the back and sending him sprawling face first into the dirt once more. Unigami looked looked to rock over. Unigami looked to rock the rock over. I noticed that the that the half of it had caught any sunlight at all was greenish in hue. Unaga- Unagami gasped. And, and look, it's covered in moss. Huh? Jay said he sat, as he sat up, rubbing his shin. Well, now that we found it, what next? Unagami turned the map over, but it was blank on the other side. I don't know. This was where the last... This was the last of my reference material on Hidden City's location. Maybe we could walk in the direction it's pointing. Uh, the boy started walking the... The boy started walking the way the top of the mountain was, the top of the rock even was in, indicating. But Jay stopped him. Hang on, I bet you're going to want this as a souvenir, he said, yanking the rock out of the ground. As soon as he did, there's a loud rumbling noise, and the ground began to shake. What's your useless? Hello, useless computer. What's your condition? What? What what are you on about? I'm confused. <laughs> but hello, welcome on in. Welcome on in. Uh, let's see. Hello, James Nolan Mason. Read Siege. What Siege? I am fairly confused. Uh, what is it? He shrieked. A tidal wave? A tsunami? No, Unagami shouted in response. And those are the same thing. Look. 
I wrote that back. Okay. <laughs> I'll check. I'll make sure to check out after stream. Uh, he pointed at the ground at the precise spot where the point of the rock had been. A long straight crack formed in the earth. Uh, does this stream support freedom, Donald Trump? No. I am fairly confused right about now. What does TND mean? I am confused. TND? Oh. Well. Bye then. Not having that kind of stuff on my stream in it. And then here we have the staircase that opened up and Minigami and Jay right here. Uh, and then the ground pulled back just wide enough that they could see stone stairs descending into darkness. When it was fully opened, the rumbling and shaking ceased. You were right again, Jay. The rock was pointed to the hidden city, only it was pointing down, not up. Jay smiled in wonder. That's twice I've been looking at the sky where I should have been paying attention to what was happening right in front of me. He said, I think there's probably a lesson in that. While he was talking to MTR, Unagami was already heading down the stairs. Still clutching the lightning bolt rock formation. <laughs> lightning bolt rock. Jay followed him. Chapter 4. Secrets in the dark. Two more chapters and then we're done. Using a fl flashlight, from, <laughs> flashlight from his backpack, Unagami illuminated the long, long staircase. As they walked past the as they walked, passing the ancient city, ancient unused mounts with torches on the walls. Jay, when I found Jay, when I found you trapped in those thorns, Unagami asked, Why haven't you used your lightning powers to free yourself? I don't have those powers anymore, he admitted. And while I'm not sure how much I miss them, I do know that I don't feel complete without them. Yeah, Unagami replied, I felt the same way same way until my dad and I figured it some way some things out and started communicating better. Well, I can't communicate with my powers, so it's kind of difficult, Jay finds out. Maybe it's not so difficult, Unagami countered. The chances of my father and I rebuilding our relationship were pretty slim. Just like you and I meeting on this island, on this island wasn't very likely. But both things happened. Both things happened. And nothing is truly lost forever. For example, the city, city we, were we are searching for. The tribe that lived there was long far gone, forever, and yet we are about to find them, in a way. My father always says you should never give in to the darkness of despair when there's still a flick of possibility. Jay had to smile again. The kid had some good points, but he wasn't sure about to admit them. Oh, what do you know? You're just a kid, he said jokingly. The stairs ended, ended in a large... The, the stairs ended in a large flat cave that Jay figured uh, was some kind of meeting room, maybe to prepare for visits to the surface. A storage space had been carved into the wall, and it held wooden staffs that could be lit and used in torches. In another storage, another storage space, they found in another storage space, they found. Uh, I need to have to chat the way. I'll chat the way. Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, 
Where were we? Where were we? Jay had to smile. Jay had to smile again. The kid has some good points, but he wasn't wasn't about to admit it. Oh, what do you know? You're just a kid, he said jokingly. Hello, sugar. Hello. Hello there. Hello, D. How are you doing today, sugar? How are you doing? Uh, and they held wooden staffs that could be lit and used as torches. They had never storage space, but they found lo longer staffs. Spears. A clear bush. Uh, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I am very good. I'm pretty good today. I'm pretty good. Got some revision done earlier and just been kind of vibing out pretty much all day. So, yeah. Uh, I keep missing my place in this book. When, to me, I've only got like one or two more chapters than the epilogue. So. So it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Uh, a clear blue stream of water ran like a... What is the book called? It's called Quest for the Lost Powers. It is a Ninjago book. Uh, it's just about how the ninja... Like the four main ninjas, so Kai, Zane, Cole and Jay, get their powers back after the... Uh, after last year's season where they lost their powers to... Uh, the Crystal King, <laughs> when fighting the Crystal King. I quite like this book so far, I quite like it. Oh, I see, I see, yes, yes. Uh, a clear blue stream of water ran like a, a tiny river through the chamber from the slightest crack under one wall, branching into all the ex exits ahead of them. Cool, Unigami noted. They had their own water source, so... All they had to gather was food. They explored the many caves that led uh, led away from the, from this largest one and found what they thought must be living quarters, a community dining area, and even some kind of and even some kind of temple. For one long for one long tunnel halted at a dead end. A stone wall covered top to bottom with etchings and carved spaces in which into which properly fitted pieces had had been placed. I can't make heads of tails of this, Jane said. Early Ninjago language, Unigami answered, studying them closely. I think this is a kind of welcome map. It was written just before the tribe left the island, for whatever reason. They didn't leave much behind, Jay said, looking around. That doesn't help your game, my VPN, much. Unigami frowned. It seems seem like there should be more to read about the tribe, but I don't see where. Then he noticed something at the bottom of the wall and waved Jay over. Jay, do you still have that rock that led us to the entrance. Jay handed the rock to Unigami and watched him slide in, slide it into the into a carved out space in the wall that was shaped just like a lightning bolt. The wall trembled as the entrance had done on the surface. Then and then the entire wall swung ninety degrees from its middle. There was a hiss of escaping air as Jay and Unigami looked into an even larger chamber. In this one there were recess, recesses that had been carved into all the walls and they were filled with neatly rolled scrolls. The tribe's library, Nagami's voice was almost a whisper. Way to go, Nagami way to go, Nagami, Jay shouted, and the two of them grinned. Executed <laughs> sometimes I just can't say words. Executed another chess bump. This time they both participated. This treasure treasure hunting stuff is cool. I can see why people make movies about it. I'm glad you're having fun, Inagami said, almost shyly. I'm glad we're doing this together. Me too, buddy, Jay admitted. Buddy, Inagami repeated. I like that. No one's ever called that before. I like it. It feels like something an older brother might say to a little brother. Jay smiled in response, and he and Inagami practically tiptoed into the chamber, as if overly con concerned with damaging or disturbing anything. Jay watched as Inagami delicately pulled a scroll, unrolled it, and read it. When he was finished, he rolled it back up and replaced it, then took another. He nodded and re he nodded, reading a gesture around the room. And then here we have the library, and over here we have Jay and Unagami. It looks like these scrolls are grouped by subject, Unagami said. These have to do with food, how they found it, or how they cooked it. 
I said that spooky library. Very spooky. Very spooky indeed. But also it's a very like, old library, so but yeah, very spooky. Very very spooky, very old library. Uh how they cooked it and stuff like that. Some of the some of the species they hunted for food had have been extinct for a long time. These scrolls are thousands of years old. Amazing, they said with awe. Unigami hurried to another collection of scrolls and opened and opened one. They explained how the tribes how the tribe raised children. He said, This is in, this is really interesting. How so? Every child born into a tribe was raised by the whole tribe, not just their mom or dad mum and dad. Everyone shared equally in teaching the child and giving them all the things any parent could. Care, love, education, protection, encouragement, discipline and acceptance. Unigami looked up Unigami looked up sadly. I never had anyone to teach me those things or show or show them to me. When I first became self aware, he continued. No wonder I was so unhappy, his expression brightened. It's a good thing that now that now my dad gives me all these things. Jay frowned when he frowned when he felt himself realising something. Wait, I had all those things when I was growing up. The parents who adopted me, Master Wu, the other ninja, all my friends I made over the years. They did all the things for me that my that my logical parents would have. I felt something in his chest loosening, a weight coming off coming off his shoulders. I feel so bad for Jay. I feel so bad for him. And it is logical to believe that you have you have given back to them to them the same things, Nikami said gently. Because ninja sharpens ninja. Jay went on starting starting to smile. My real mum must have known when she and my dad gave me to the walkers that they'd make sure I'd always have people around me who who would help help me, guide me and teach me. Powerless or not, they'd make sure I'd never be alone if I needed help. Even as he said it, he could feel warm. He could feel warm, warm bloom in his chest and spread throughout his body. Then he felt a powerless jewel of energy spring from his chest and out to his hand. He looked at them in wonder. They were they were sparkling. He could feel the hair on his back on the back of his neck and his, on his arms stand up. It was a familiar feeling, and his heart began to race. He felt stronger and more alive than he felt in weeks. Jay felt himself smiling, and Inagami was looking at him and smiling too. Jay, is something happening? I think so, Jay answered, with a hint of laughter in his voice. I think. Suddenly, Inagami's flashlight went out, plunging the cabin into darkness. It's just the batteries, he assured Jay. I'll find some more in my backpack. Don't worry about it, buddy, Inagami heard Jay say. Then the ca cabin was br brilliantly lit by crackling, sizzling energy from Jay's hand. Like I was about to say, I think my elemental power is back. I'm the master of lightning again. In full fur, in full force. But before they could celebrate, a loud rumbling cut them, cut him off, and the entire cabin started to shake violently. And that sounds like an earthquake. Inagami shouted above the noise, and it and it's building to its full force. Chapter five. Nowhere to go but up. I don't think this is a natural earthquake. Inagami answered, trying to keep his balance. I think the tribe may have caught. In some kind of trap to deal with ruin robbers. But we're not robbing the tribe, Jay protested. Then he realised, of course they don't know that. We'd better, oof. Inagami said as a section of the cave ceiling came loose and struck him on the head. He felt to get around, limp. More rocks continued to rain down around them. Hang on, buddy, Jay, Jay said, shutting off the power of one of his hands and scooping up Inagami with it. With it. Then he ran with his friend friend back to the main chamber, using his powered up hand to blast away falling debris. Jay saw the stones were getting larger. It wouldn't be long before the cabin was filled, and hopefully not while Jay and Unagami were in it. Jay, sta Jay started up the stairs, and as he did, he remembered just how many stairs there were. But all he could do was run up to run up the steps towards di towards distant daylight <laughs> toward distant daylight. Firing lightning bolts that smashed large rocks into smaller rocks, then quickly blasting those rocks before they could injure him or Unagami. It wasn't easy. Jay had to keep track of all the falling stones while also maintaining balance on his stair on the stair stairway, since there was no railing to keep him from falling off the side and taking a long, long drop back into the rock rock choke choked cabin cabins of the tribe. He slipped once or twice, coming perilously close to falling. And small rocks, some slightly bigger than small, that he hadn't been able to blast pelt, pelted him. But he was almost to the surface. He and Unagami were two steps away from his safety when a massive 
Massive slab of stone broke loose from the stairway's ceiling and fell towards him them at high speed. And then here we have Jay carrying Unagami up the uh, stairway. Hoping he had enough of a charge left from his lightning powers for a couple less blasts, he smashed the slab into two of I like the pictures. I quite like them too. In like almost, I have quite a few Ninjago books and they, they're well drawn. I agree. I have quite a few, I have quite a few of the Ninjago books and they all have like pictures in them. And they're all like drawn in like a very similar way. And I enjoy how the characters are like drawn and how well they translate from the show to the books. They look they look pretty like how you would expect them to look. They put, look pretty like similar to how they look in the show compared to how they look in the books. And I just think that is very nice. It feels very dynamic for Lego characters. It does, doesn't it? It feel it like feels like natural. It doesn't like look too weird. It just it just like looks how you would expect. It looks normal, I guess. I guess that's how you would describe it. Like there's no like weird movements like it'd be very different translating like ninjago to books compared to like the lego movie where i feel like the lego movie like if those were done in like a book form with this same art style i feel like that wouldn't translate well just because how differently the like the characters move in the move in the lego movie compared to how they um like move around in the show I just I just think this I just think this book this book does draw them very well. Um, he smashed the slab in, into with one bolt, then pulverized every single piece of debris with what with few more. He da he dashed up the last few steps and collapsed with Unagami in the small clearing. Behind him he had a terrible final roar, and when he turned back around he saw that the entrance to the city was closed forever. Jay exhaled deeply and realised he could still feel his elemental power surging through him. He swore to himself that he'd never let he'd never let go of his true potential again. Jay, he heard a weak voice behind him and turned to see Unagami sitting up, thinking, What's happened? We overstayed our welcome, Jay replied, pointed us to the rock filled pit that had been the stairwell. But I followed your advice. I saw a flicker of possibilities, so I didn't give in to the darkness. Turns out that even though you're a kid, you do know a few things. Anyways, I think you should have more than enough material for your game. Are you okay? I think so. He looked at Jay with delighted astonishment. You saved me, just like one brother would do for another. We found a bomb, we found a pond, like I have with my dad. That makes us family. He scampered over and embraced the startled Jay tightly. Jay was touched and his voice broke a little when he jokingly replied, are you just a kid? What do you know? Am I interrupting something? Nia asked, stepping into the clearing from the jungle wearing an amused smile. Inagami in mid -hood turned to beam at her. Jay and I are brothers. Huh? <laughs> Nia became very confused when she realised it was Inagami who was hugging Jay. Jay stood and gently separated himself from Inagami, but Inagami wouldn't let go of his hand. Somehow, Jay didn't really mind. It's a long story, but it ends up with me getting my element of power back and feeling a whole lot better on my family. He smiled down at Unagami, biological and extended. That's great, Kia said, still still perplexed, the foot thrilled to the J. I'm just glad to see you, he said. How did you find me? Anyway, Nia smiled slightly as she reached to pl around to pluck something off the back of his belt. Then she wiggled a small device in front of his eyes. I planted this little track on you when I heard you, but goodbye, she said. I knew you had something to work out, but I also knew you'd get lost the minute that you walked out that door. Your sense of direction is really horrible. The hotel is just back that way, not very far. We also saved each other, Unagami cried, turning to Nia. Now we're all family. Brother, brother and sister. Welcome to the family, Nia. <laughs> Nia smiled, still puzzled but happy. Thank you, she said. It's an honour. Uh, this is great, Unagami exclaimed, taking Nia's hand. My family is growing every day. As they walked towards the bush, Jay looked over and Unaga Unagami's head at, the at Nia. Wait, is my sense of direction really that bad? Nia smiled warmly and so it's, it's time to have you back. <laughs> and then here we have Nia 
Unagami and Jay. And then that is the end of Jay's story. And now we are on to the epilogue. Thank you for allowing me to share, share the stories of Kai, Zane, Cole, and Jay with you, friend. As you have read, there was no sorcery involved when the ninja regained their elemental powers. Kai needed to accept that he couldn't always be the hero in every situation. Oh my god, oh my god, epilogue time. Yes, it's epilogue time, epilogue time, let's go. And he learned a valuable lesson about the importance of accepting help when it is offered. I confess, I confess that I was older than Kai when I learned that lesson myself. That that clearly shows in like the Spinjitzu Brothers books. I have just finished the Spinjitzu Brothers 4 and I, I, love, I love these Ninjago books. As for Zane, well, he did not hesitate to ask for someone for help in finding his powers. He turned to someone who had who has helped him many times in the past, and someone he trusts perhaps above all others, Pixel. Zane's journey deep into the banks of his fragmented memories made him realize that yeah, <laughs> made him realize that we all need to be able to forgive ourselves for any wrongdoings, or else we can't move forward in life. As a, sen a sense of inner peace and wholeness helped Cole and Jay restore their elements of powers and true potential. Giving and receiving strength from your family and the people you care about balances and grounds you. Once Cole realised this, the path to rediscovering his true potential became clear. Jay's secret to unlocking his true potential was buried very deep within himself. And he probably wouldn't have been successful without his most unexpected guide, Unagami. The boy helped Jay realise that the family he'd been missing were, in fact, all the people who loved him, cared for him, and stood by, his side, stood by his side when he needed them. When I first reflected on these stories, two lessons emerged. First, one can always count on one's friends. And second, no one, no one is ever truly powerless. The stories of others can be instructed in our own lives. Sometimes we can learn something new. Other times we can remember something something lost that may have been forgotten please come visit me again where the ninja are concerned there are always more stories to tell over a fresh a cup of refreshing tea master Wu. and that is the end of quest for the lost powers i hope you guys have enjoyed these past few streams um well this stream and last sunday stream i've, I've quite enjoyed them myself just reading through this book um and I shall see you, anyways, I shall probably, I'm, I'm on Easter break over these next two weeks. Um, I'll, I think I'm going to stream Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays this week, like these next few weeks. So I shall probably see you, if I don't stream Monday, because I do have support sessions on Monday and Tuesday in college. So if I don't see you Monday, I'll probably see you guys Wednesday. So anyways, I shall see you guys either Wednesday or either Monday, Wednesday or Friday.